Dear students, today I am going to discuss on MCQs in ENT with explanations third module which involves head and neck. The first question is which tragostomy tube helps in phonation? Fuller's tragostomy tube, Jackson's tracheostomy tube, Protex tracheostomy tube and adjustable planes tube. The correct answer is A. Fuller's tracheostomy tube which has a hole in the neck or in the shaft. As the patient closes the Fuller's tracheostomy tube, the patient can breathe from the opening in the shoulder which leads to phonation. Second is commonest organism causing acute epiglottitis is Staph aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Hemolytic Streptococcus and yes influenza type B. The correct answer is yes influenza type B as it is straightforward question. Question number 3. Which of the following is dire emergency? Complete unilateral coronal atresia, complete bilateral coronal atresia, incomplete unilateral coronal atresia, and incomplete bilateral coronal atresia. As you know, the children are obligate nasal breathers. Therefore, when there is complete bilateral coronal atresia, the child or the infant cannot breathe and can die on the table itself. So, complete unilateral coronal atresia does not lead to any problem, although it leads to unilateral nasal obstruction. Incomplete unilateral coronal atresia or incomplete bilateral coronal atresia do not cause dire emergency. Question number 4. Omega shaped epiglottis is seen in acute epiglottitis, laryngomalacia, acute laryngotracheobronchitis, and congenital subglottic stenosis. The correct answer is laryngomalacia. Acute epiglottis leads to turban epiglottis, very swollen epiglottis. Laryngomalacia is due to flaccidity of the supraglottic larynx, so that leads to omega shaped epiglottis. Acute laryngotracheobronchitis, the clinical signs are apparent and congenital subglottic stenosis, the infant develops strider. Question number 5. Recurrent laryngeal knob supplies all the muscles except A. Lateral cricoarytenoid, B. Thyroid C. Cricothyroid and D. Transverse arytenoids. Cricothyroid is the only muscle that is supplied by superior laryngeal knob and not by recurrent laryngeal knob. Question number 6. Rinkage edema is most commonly caused by voice abuse, GERD, alcohol and smoking. Rinkage edema is most commonly caused by smoking. The smoker, ladies, elderly is might present with rinkage edema that also leads to hoarseness in the male voice. Question number 7. Which of the following carcinoma of larynx commonly presents with neck nodes? Supraglottic carcinoma, glottic carcinoma, Subglottic carcinoma and verrucous carcinoma. Necrons are common in supraglottic malignancy. Worsness is common in glottic malignancy. And stratigraphy is common in subglottic malignancy. As you know, subglottis is the narrowest portion of the larynx. Verrucous carcinoma is also defined as super well differentiated squamosal carcinoma and that is slow growing tumor. Question number 8. All muscles of tongue are supplied by hypoglossal nerve except myoglossus palatoglossus, genioglossus and hyoglossus. There is no myoglossus. So, the correct answer is A. Question number 10. Test insertion from anterior to third of tongue is carried out by hypoglossal knob, glossopharyngeal knob, corda tympani and lingual knob. The somatic sensation from anterior to third of tongue is carried out by lingual knob and the special test sensation is carried out by Corda tympani. So, C is the correct answer. Glossopharyngeal nerve also carries some system from posterior anther of tongue. Question number 10. Which of the following is not the part of valerius ring? Tubal tonsils, cerebellar tonsils, palatine tonsils, and lingual tonsils. The correct answer is B. Cerebellar tonsils. They are present in brain, not in the throat or in the valerius ring. Question number 11. Average length of esophagus in adults is 15 cm, 25 cm, 30 cm and 40 cm. Average length in adults is 25 cm. Straightforward answer. Question number 12. The commonest complication of following tonsillectomy is palatal paralysis, hemorrhage, sepsis 
and rheum of the uvula this is tricky question although hemorrhage is described as most troublesome complication after a tonsillectomy but commonest complication is edema of the uvula during tonsillar surgery palatal paralysis is rare hemorrhage might occur sometimes and sepsis is rare to happen question number 13 recurrent tonsillitis is defined by all of the following except seven or more episodes in one year five episodes per year for two years three episodes per year for three years and two episodes per year for four years the correct answer is three episodes per year for four years the options a b and c are correct question number 14 a young patient presents with history of dysphagia more to liquids than solids the first investigation you will do is barium swallow esophagoscopy laryngoscopy and ct chest although all the options seem to be correct but the most common option is barium swallow you have to find out the motility disorder esophagoscopy laryngoscopy and ct chest are almost unable to find out the mobility disorder so esophageal mobility disorder is diagnosed by barium swallow in these options the pharyngeal pouch passes through superior constrictor muscle middle constrictor muscle inferior constrictor muscle and thyroid membrane laryngeal pouch passes through the inferior constrictor muscle between its two parts question number 16 all muscles of soft palate are supplied by cranial accessory nerve except tensor veri palatini palatoglossus palatopharyngeus and levator veri palatini the correct answer is tensor veri palatini which is straightforward question number 17 general sensory supply for entry to the tongue is hypoglossal glossopharyngeal cordate tympani and lingual nerve as you know the general sensory supply is from lingual nerve and the special sensory supply is from cordate tympani so d is the correct answer question number 18 orbax nerve plexus is in which layer of the esophagus fibrous coat muscular coat submucosa and the mucous coat the correct answer being the in the muscular coat which is also straightforward in anatomy which helps in muscular movement question number 19 radiation of pain to ear in tonsillitis is along vagus knob spinal accessory knob facial knob and jacobson's knob the jacobson's knob supplies the tonsil as well as the external canal therefore the radiation of pain to ear in tonsillitis is along the jacobson's knob Question number 20. Quincy is defined as collection of pus in peritonsillary space, paraphrenic space, retrophrenic space, and parietal space. The question is very simple. Quincy is defined as collection of pus in the peritonsillary space, so called peritonsillary abscess. Question number 21. The superior laryngeal vessel pierces which structure to enter and exit the larynx? Cricothyroid membrane, thyroid membrane. Cricotracheal membrane and cricobocal membrane. The correct answer is thyroid membrane. As you know, while doing cricothyroid surgery, we perform from cricothyroid membrane, supposing that there are no blood vessels and nerves. So, cricotracheal membrane is lower membrane and cricobocal membrane is in the cricoid and the vocal cord. So, the correct answer being thyroid membrane. Question number 22 Acute laryngotracheal bronchitis is caused by which organism? Rotavirus, influenza virus, para influenza virus, and rhinovirus. The correct answer is para influenza virus. Again, it's straightforward answer. Question number 23 Tripod sign is seen in laryngeal diphtheria, laryngotracheal bronchitis, tuberculosis of larynx, and acute epiglottitis. The correct answer is acute epiglottitis. As there is swelling of the epiglottis, the child lies in tripod position for breathing. Question number 23. Isigis type 1 thyroplasty describes which procedure? Vocal cord medialization, vocal cord lateralization, vocal cord shortening, and vocal cord lengthening. The correct answer is vocal cord medialization. Lateralization, shortening, and lengthening are 2, 3, and 4 respectively. Question number 25. Liar sign is the radiological findings in in bronchiolocyst, plunging granula, carotid body tumor, and cystic hygroma. Liar sign is Radiological findings seen in carotid body tumor and signifies as splaying of the carotid arteries. 
internal and the external carotid arteries. Question number 26. Which is false regarding oropharyngeal isthmus? 1. It separates oral cavity from oropharynx. Correct. Bounded superiorly by junction between hard and soft palate. Correct. Bounded inferiorly by circumvallate papillae. Correct. And bounded laterally by posterior transverse pillar. Wrong. So false statement is D. It is bounded laterally by the anterior transverse pillar. Question number 27. False statement regarding cause of reactionary blue hemorrhage is slippage of ligaza, displacement of the clot, reopening of collapsed blood vessels and absence of clots in the transfer fossa. So, slipping of ligaza, displacement of the clot and reopening of the collapsed blood vessels might be the cause for reactionary bleeding. Absence of clots in the fossa might not lead to reactionary hemorrhage. Question number 28. Which of the following is a pre-malignant condition? Ranula, geographical tongue, herpes labialis and oral submugous fibrosis. Oral submugous fibrosis is one of the pre-malignant conditions in the oral cavity. Ranula, geographic tongue and herpes labialis are not pre-malignant conditions. Question number 29. Vincent's angina is also known as Quincy, Trains Mouth, Glandular Fever and Cold sore. The correct answer is B. Trains mouth. Quincy is peritonsal abscess. Cold sore is herpes labialis. And glandular fever is infectious mononucleosis. Question number 30. Posterior cricoeritinoid muscle is adductor of the vocal cords, flexor of the vocal cords, abductor of the vocal cords, and opener of the laryngeal inlet. So, correct answer is C. It is the sole abductor of the vocal cords. Thank you very much. Please subscribe my channel Dr. Krishna Koirala for other useful videos about ENT related classes.